My guest today is Catherine Parker, Westchester County Legislator for the 7th District. Catherine's a strong advocate for residents in the Sound Shore area and for Westchester County residents overall. She hasn't been shy about voting against county budget she finds unsustainable and county projects such as the privatization of the Westchester County Airport. I've asked Catherine to join me today for an uninterrupted conversation about just those issues and more. I'm Alice Bloom. This is A Town and Village 2. Catherine, welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time at this time of year to be my guest. Oh, I'm very happy to be here with you, Alice. Well, I know you didn't have to travel too far. We're in Mamaroneck now, and I know Catherine lives in Rye, where she also has a business. So thank you again for being here. Now, let's start by talking about the county budget. Now, it's an arduous process to do a budget of how much? Well, it's $1.81 billion dollars. Okay, not a small amount no, of money. No, no, that is uh, that's a pretty handsome sum. And out of that budget, uh, 548 million is the actual tax levy to county residents. So if you think about there being almost a million residents in, in Westchester, and the tax levy has been kept flat at 548 million dollars. Sounds okay. Good. <laughs> right. Some people are happy about that. No tax increase. No right. county tax increase. Although it is, it it really is at this point. Um, uh, there has been a tax increase that we just haven't paid for yet because we haven't met our obligations. Even for 2016, the year that we're closing right now, um, it it has uh, that that budget was really fraught with some major issues as well. There was uh, an overestimation of sales tax. Uh, other counties were predicting that because gas prices were so much lower. You know, it's it's one of those double-edged swords. It's good for your pocketbook when you go to the gas um, station uh, that you're paying less, but you are also there's less um, sales tax that the county is deriving from those sales. So um, so that just is one other way where the 2016 budget uh, did not meet expectations and we are actually, we have a, a deficit for 2016 um, and I'm predicting that for 2017 we're gonna be in the same boat. So when there's a deficit, does the county have to borrow money? Well, yes, we either borrow or we are dipping into our reserves and we've been dipping repeatedly over the last few years. And again, we are at a point where our reserves have gone below um, the, the recommendation that most of our credit agencies would wanna see Westchester. Um, I, I, it, it all is, is just adding up to what I perceive to be um, a very big problem, as I say, for the future. Because well, what is our bond rating like now? It's a, it's a AAA, but okay. it's on the, and for two of them, it's a AAA, and then a AA plus. But um, Moody's is definitely looking, and our credit, uh, our reserve fund is probably going to be falling below the where it ended last year at 139 million dollars um, and it's going to be significantly lower I think uh, are we required to keep a certain amount in reserve they they say that the if you could keep about eight percent of your um, of the budget that that's the minimum that a municipality should 8%. have eight percent eight percent and we're we're below that and we will be below it because again just based on the fact that we're we're falling short on revenue you know um, our auditors uh, O'Connor Davies has come in and said that we really need to to be looking at again where we can make up revenues our um, citizens budget advisory uh, committee has also said that you know we are really facing a uh, problem here where there's, uh, you know, we sold a building last year to balance the budget. Um, we uh, were able to get about $15 million from that sale to, again, sort of put the 
you know, uh, hold, fill the whole of the budget, but we still fell short um, by about $3 million. So we just actually had to borrow, uh, you know, go out for a bond for uh, tax certioraries. That's when people challenge their taxes uh, for about $3 million, and that's for 2016. Okay, so that's money that the county has to pay to people who challenge their tax assessments and Correct. have won. Yes, that's right. And generally, that money that mo municipalities use really comes out of operating. You know, that should be something that you budget for. And Is that predictable? It, it is predictable. Yeah, there's always a certain percentage. Um, you know, you can figure out what you're going to need. And again, it's just good fiscal management and smart budgeting. What about pension obligations? Are they being funded? So the pension obligations, again, uh, traditionally that's an area where the county has uh, borrowed heavily to, to meet that obligation. And um, that's troublesome. You know, we know, again, this is a tax increase that's just going to be paid later on. Some people might argue that in a time when interest rates are so low, borrowing money might be a smart thing to do. True. Uh, you can say that, and certainly for capital projects, that's a good, definitely a good fiscal management. You know, borrow for some big projects that, uh, for infrastructure, where you're going to be paying um, over several generations and the generation of residents that will be using that um, infrastructure. Uh, so it's not just on the backs of the people from today, but, you know, for 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road. Pardon the pun of okay. the road. <laughs> <laughs> for infrastructure. Well, there are many capital projects, and I, roads are just one in Westchester. I'm sure there are many others. Bridges, wastewater treatment plants, mm -hmm. you name it. Lots of infrastructure. But back to your, you were asking about pensions. Pension costs really, again, should be something that you are managing with your, your operating budget. Well, have you had to make any hard choices in this budget? Uh, you know, this is a very interesting time. We've had uh, um, some real bipartisan support for managing our finances. Uh, and certainly my Republican colleagues and my Democratic colleagues all seemed um, each year as it gets harder and harder to, um, to keep that $548 million of tax levy uh, covering all our services that we really have to provide. It's, uh, it's definitely tricky. Um, and I didn't hear from my Republican colleagues that they, you know, that there was another option. Um, they seem to be willing to go along with the um, you know, $15 million that has been used for 2017 uh, from Oak Tree Capital, the, uh, the group that's interested in running Westchester County Airport. So basically, we've taken a $15 million loan. Uh, and okay, we, we're segueing to a whole other subject. So we want to talk about privatization of the airport, yep. but you're saying that's being used to justify the budget that's now been passed. Yeah, so originally when the county executive gave the, the Board of Legislators the budget, um, attached to the budget was a privatization deal for Westchester County Airport, a 40-year deal. Um, it would basically give the county over time about $140 million, $15 million that would be the first payment, and that $15 million would be used to again, plug the, the hole for the 2017 budget. Now, um, this plan has not been approved yet. No. And, and when you think about it, I, I couldn't say that it's a great idea or a bad idea because we're talking about a, a major privatization plan where there was no request for proposals. In other words, generally for something this big, uh, the county drafts a very lengthy um, description of the mission of the, you know, what Westchester wants to derive from, from whatever the situation is, the privatization deal or, um, you know, uh, looking for a lease agreement, and um, goes out to the market 
and we have a chance to test the market, um, see who would be interested. They would, um, you know, interested parties would submit a, their own proposal, and then we would, you know, judge those um, in comparison to one another, have some experts come in that could, again, sort of give additional context. But this was um, unheard of to have this huge deal without uh, what's called an RFP, a request or for proposal. Or careful scrutiny. I mean, has the Board of Legislators actually given their approval of this whole privatization suggestion? No, no. I think, um, again, my colleagues, and, and it's really across the aisle, everybody sort of feels the same way, that it's, it's difficult to judge whether this is a good deal for Westchester County residents or not a good deal for Westchester ca uh, County residents. We've, we've started to have some discussion. We've had um, Oak Tree come in and at least give a very you know, general description of what they would um, uh, try to accomplish uh, with the airport. But we really haven't even investigated the big question, which is what, what do we want for our Westchester County Airport? I mean, right now, as it stands, it, it kind of services Westchester residents almost like a utility. You know, it's small. It's really manageable for um, for Westchester County residents, and of course residents in other areas that that come to Westchester. But uh, it's not a major hub. It's a it's a spoke actually in in a larger system. And I think anybody um, who is looking at the um, opportunity that Westchester County residents would present would say to themselves, all right, there's, there's an opportunity to make more money if you make the airport bigger, you know, uh, do something that's really could, could positively or negatively impact county residents. Well, and that's the, it, the question. What it seems to me is that I don't hear a careful attribution or evaluation of the relative merits of having a county airport and how to retain those merits for the residents of Westchester County. Um, I mean, we kind of, never, I've never thought of it as a privatization. It's just so nice to be able to fly out of an airport that's 10 minutes away, that, you know, you can get a taxi or whatever if you need to. It's just an, an easy thing. It seems like a great attribute that enhanced the quality of life in Westchester County. Right. What, how will, are you ensuring in privatization, do we ensure the same quality of uh, access, for example, or right. any of the things that we enjoy there? Right. And if you think about also the major uh, roads getting yes. to Westchester County Airport, um, you know, 287, we already can see that that corridor can be really difficult um, at rush hour. Uh, 684 even at times can really back up. So I think that we really have to be very careful um, because I th as, as we investigate this, we have to understand, you know, is this going to be a positive impact um, to residents and their quality of life? Or is this, you know, the dollars all sound really enticing, but are we giving up far more than what we're actually getting. Um, would we, would Westchester County maintain any kind of control over the growth of that airport or what might come in here? Well, that's just it. Now would be the time before there's an agreement because once that agreement is signed, it's, that's it's it. It's done. So uh, now, we, we have our work cut out for us. Does the FAA have to weigh in on this? They certainly do. Um, and this is something that I, I think the FAA tends to also take their time and, and analyze um, the decision to to allow this this privatization to go through. So um, there ha there aren't really a lot of models. I was just going to ask if there's precedent for this. There's about Puerto Rico. <laughs> okay. the, the oak tree has uh, has this model in Puerto Rico and actually in Europe. There's there's a lot of um, privatization of the airports in Europe, but in the United States. There has not been, and and I think that that's something again that we have to consider as we go forward. Um, but here, we, have we collected the money, the initial money? So 
there was a, call it a loan, um, $15 million from Oak Tree was used for the 2017 budget. And um, if there will be an RFP or a request for proposals in the new year, uh, and that um, the responses, I think we have to, we'll be getting those back sometime in the late spring. And, uh, and if um, somebody comes in with a higher proposal, if that's the direction that the Board of Legislators wants to go in, um, we would refund the money to Oak Tree. And, and we'd have to borrow to do that. Uh, no, we. Or you take you, money from reserves. Or you would, if there's another entity, another group that comes in that you know offers more money, they would be paying say more than 15 million. So we would give Oak Tree back their 15 million, take from let's say you know. Alpha Company, just making it up. But, but uh, yeah. tell me if I'm wrong. It sounds to me like the Board of Legislators hasn't even fully approved the privatization Correct. of the airport, the concept of privatizing right. this. Right. The bigger question is, do we really need to change the, the dynamic of the airport from what we have today, which is a really nice, small, regional airport, and do something that will, you know, make put Westchester County, um, make that a, a bigger hub. Now, do residents of neighboring communities have any say in all of this? Well, they do right now. And one of the things, they've come to the board. Um, they are, have voiced a tremendous amount of concern. Again, um, because we've never looked at something like this, I think they understand that it's important that we do our due diligence and the facts are not in as to, again, all the decisions, whether or not the, the benefit to the, to the pocketbooks of the taxpayers ends up um, more uh, important than any quality of life issues that could um, possibly uh, impact them. Uh, yeah. Have any of the good government organizations or nonpartisan organizations taken on a study of this proposal? No, a, this was given to us six weeks before we were supposed to pass our budget. So we we really were given six weeks to, again, um, do the due diligence and investigate. And when you think about the fact that, um, you know, many times we've sat here and we talked about Playland because that took us six years for that deal. This is Playland on steroids. And that was six weeks to investigate versus six years well, for Playland. Who's driving this train or plane or flying this plane? <laughs> I mean, sorry for the metaphor. But, I mean, where does this emanate from? Well, you know, I will give the county executive some credit for trying to think outside the box and come up with, you know, another way besides taxpayers' wallets mm. to pay for government. I, I think that that is is um, good, you know, we should all be looking at these opportunities. But again, this was something that was not done um, collaboratively in any way, shape, or form. I think that the um, County Executive's administration had been working on this just about a year, but there had been no um, communication with any of my colleagues on um, our floor. and. And it was just, again, packaged with the budget. So in execution, I would say that, you know, if that's indeed what the County Executive's administration had wanted, wanted to achieve for 2017, it missed that mark because there just wasn't enough time to really do the due diligence that obviously the administration had been working on for for a year. So what happens now? You're putting out a request for proposals. So there'll be a request for proposals uh, that should be out to the public by the end of January. Okay. And and then I think my colleagues and I are um, very committed to having um, you know mi as many meetings as we need. Um, and will there be public hearings where people can hear what the proposals absolutely. are, as well as be able to register their concerns? Yes, and. Um, you know, we will, of course, have the documents for the RFP on the West, westchesterlegislators.com, our website, mm -hmm. and um, as those meetings, um, all our meetings are, are taped and they can 
watch or stream it live. And, uh, you know, certainly we will want to hear from the public. It's a, it's a very major decision for, uh, for Westchester County residents. Right. Well, I think most people are probably not cognizant of this proposal at all. It's sort of just appeared. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, without much talk. All right, there's a few other issues I wanted to bring up since I've got you. Yeah. You're, you're my, my <laughs> prisoner for, the, for a half hour. Um, one of the things I'm always wondering about is the affordable housing agreement. Now, a few years ago, a former Westchester County executive, um, county executive entered into an agreement to build, I think it was 740 units of affordable housing throughout the county to satisfy uh, a legal action. How are we doing on that? So um, by the end of the year, we were to have 750 units built. And um, I think we are very close to achieving that. I think if I'm correct, we have 710 units that have gone completely through all the, um, you know, have their permits. There still are uh, a couple of projects that are at the local level where they're getting some approvals. Okay. But we have, um, at the board, we've um, appropriated all the financing for all the projects to meet that deadline. Okay, so has the county suffered any fines for delay? Not yet, and be, you know, but the year's not up, and, and then, you know, we'll see. Granted, it's um, we live in interesting under, times because. Right. But we're under a court mandate. I mean, this isn't it's an a optional it's, thing it's to do. Absolutely, and Judge Cote is, you know, will will be, uh, you know, making the final decision on that. Um, you know, we still have been, a monitor. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Johnson, who was our monitor, had uh, resigned over the summer. And we still do not know who the new monitor uh, that will take over from Jim Johnson, uh, who that new monitor will be. But that should be an announced shortly. Uh, but I, I th think that, you know, clearly um, the county has been making every effort to meet its obligation. And I think our, all the communities that were part of that original settlement that had um, been called out, they've been working pretty expeditiously to ensure that um, there is affordable housing in their communities and um, you know we, we will see what happens at the end of the day but we're we're working pretty pretty diligently. Okay. Well it sounds like we're very close to achieving <laughs> yes. what our obligations are. Well we're about to see a change in administrations on the federal level. Um, there's great concern uh, throughout the nation over what that will mean. What do you think that will translate into in Westchester County? Well, it's interesting that you we were just talking about affordable housing because uh, one of one of the cabinet um, uh, names that I found uh, interesting was that Dr. Ben Carson is con being considered for the head of um, the uh, of HUD, and um, I think that. We will to you know it's still yet to be determined what that's going he to. He doesn't mean. have a very positive opinion about public housing or funding of housing for indigent people. Uh, so again, what this, how this will come to are you concerned to, to bear? I am. The area that I'm most concerned about, actually, with HUD is also our um, community development block grants, the CDBG funds, because our communities, Maranek, for instance, has benefited from that money. Um, even our uh, community resource center at one time received uh, funding from that. And that's part of, the, um, of HUD. So I do think that we, we could, you know, end up getting the short end of the stick there if, uh, if indeed they do something that um, does not promote um, the urban development as uh, as it has been doing. Okay, there's also been concern about um, a temperament of intolerance that um, we've seen in incidents reported throughout the nation. Have you seen increases of actions uh, that are unfortunate in Westchester? Yeah, and, and right here, you know, right in our own backyard in, in Mimaranek, uh and in my community in Rye and uh, throughout 
Westchester, I was really surprised that uh, literally starting right after the election, um, I'm on Facebook and uh, so are uh, many. Are you on Twitter as well? <laughs> I am on Twitter. <laughs> okay. And, you know, people started re reporting, uh, you know, really sad incidents where, uh, you know, a woman that lives here was walking in the manor and, you know, had a derogatory term used. Um, and I, you know, think that that is something that we, we know that Mamaroneck is a tolerant community. But and a very fact, diverse one. And a very diverse one, but it's unfortunate that I think certain people of, that are, you know, do not believe in that uh, inclusiveness uh, feel somewhat more empowered. So I, I actually have uh, reached out. I sent a letter to the Deputy County Executive and our Human Rights Commissioner, Jim Castroblanco, and I, I asked them to start a database where we're not just tracking the offenses that people are going to, you know, to the police department for, but, but we're getting into the weeds and we're really going to get more data on uh, the things that are happening so that we can really better understand how widespread and how big a problem of intolerance do we really have here in Westchester County. Because I believe, I've, I've lived here my whole life, and I believe Westchester is inclusive and it is tolerant, but the fact that these things are happening and happening with great regularity really concerns me. And I think we, we really need to, to do you know, more to, uh, to whether it's outreach and education, but we have to understand how big and widespread the problem is. So you're trying to get ahead of it. Yeah. And maybe forestall it before it becomes pervasive. Absolutely. Wow. And I, I think that the Anti-Defamation League is, is, has been working as well at, at um, again, trying to help promote um, tolerance, not just even for, you know, when we're talking about um, instances of anti-Semitism, but they're actually looking across all um, ethnic and religious intolerance as well. Yes. Uh, so I really think that this is something that the Human Rights Commissioner needs to consider. At this time, um, what I've heard back after I had uh, written uh, my constituents to say that I had requested this, but I'd heard, um, I gave it a couple of weeks and had heard nothing, uh, he did eventually write me back and what he said was that um, at this point, he thinks that just the incidents that are police are that are reported to the police, um, just getting that data is is important. Is useful. Well, will you come back and give us a report yes, in a few months? Be happy to. I'd love to have you back again. I want to thank you now for taking the time to be with me. We've learned so much, and I hope we've informed our uh, constituents, your constituents, about the matters before you at the County Board of Legislators. Catherine, have a wonderful holiday season. Thank I've you. enjoyed talking with you. And to you at home, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.